And if you're a fitness enthusiast, and especially if you're chemically enhanced, you might be doing a couple things that could be contributing to this. How can you prevent getting thyroid cancer? Because thyroid cancer rates are on the rise. And if you're a fitness enthusiast, and especially if you're chemically enhanced, you might be doing a couple things that could be contributing to this risk. Although I have to say, outside of fitness and outside of the chemically enhances where I've seen the most amount of thyroid cancer. Like I do have to say, although you're gonna mention some names in fitness, I have to say that most of the cases that I've seen of thyroid cancer are outside of fitness. Nevertheless, we wanna mitigate our risk as much as possible. I don't wanna do things that are gonna to add to it. And if I do, I wanna take something to mitigate it. I'm not gonna stay away from steroids because they increase the risk. If there's something I can take to mitigate the risk also, instead I just include that supplement in my stack. So first, Leo, why are chemically enhanced fitness people more susceptible to thyroid cancer than normal people? There may be many reasons. What I want to mention is papillary thyroid cancer. There, that's the one that's been on the rise globally, I think like you know over 30% increases in the last couple of decades. That's the cancer that was found in Dallas McCarver after he passed. A lot of bodybuilders find that they have nodules in their thyroid also. The reason I think could be is growth hormone. So I want to mention two reasons in which you may want to be worried about this, especially. Well, first of all, why are the rates of papillary thyroid cancer increasing globally? It's thought to be due to enhanced iodine intake. This enhanced iodine intake protects you from other thyroid cancers and will also protect you from this thyroid cancer unless you have an excess. It's thought that either that or env environmental toxins are causing this. And it's not, they're not- It's weird because I was more worried that more people are deficient in iodine, not having too much iodine. This is, this is still true in some parts of the world, but in the US it's not as common. Iodine is one of those things that more is not necessarily better, but you definitely don't want to be deficient. So you want to make sure you have enough iodine. Deficiency clearly causes thyroid cancers and so does excess, but the excess is less well known. That's why iodized table salt became so common, but also because of coitus. So what I wanted to mention is this. When you have the, the standard signal in the body, which you can find in your blood tests, to grow or maintain the size of the thyroid, like for your uh, testicles, it's FSH, follicle stimulating hormone. For your thyroid, it's TSH, thyroid stimulating hormone. When TSH is above around four in the US metrics, doctors will usually recommend that someone takes LT4. T4 is an inactive thyroid hormone that is the main signal to the thyroid to reduce TSH. I mean, to, to the brain to reduce TSH. So your TSH level is, is developed according to how much T4 you have. I never even thought of it that way. I always thought of T4 as just a thyroid precursor to T3. It, but you're saying it's also a signaling it hormone. It is, yeah, but it's a signaling hormone, exactly. Mm. So actually the T4 is not supposed to, if you dose T4, if you dose T3, cytomel, you'll find that it won't lower your TSH as well as T4. But the important reason, why would you not want to just go straight to T3? Although T3 has been shown to be an antidepressant in human controlled, placebo controlled studies. But why wouldn't you go directly to it? Because it has a direct effect on heart rate. T3, T3 is an antidepressant. I'll yeah. tell you, if I take too much T3, I get depressed because I lose all my gains. It speeds yeah. up your metabolism yeah. so much. It's the kind of thing like if someone's deficient in it, or you think I, that even if someone's not deficient, we could take a little bit of T3 and just bumping it a little bit above the, normal the, would also help depression? The latter, but I think it was in a treatment-resistant depression study that I read, but there's more than one study on it. Maybe we should make a video about this one day. I should review it. We should try it on people that are depressed. Yeah. Let's so get our lab rats out. So the, the, there are advantages there, but the T3 has a direct impact on heart rate. So if you take T3, first of all, there's a circadian issue with T3. You don't really want it at the same level throughout the day while you're asleep. And second of all, you don't want it to be, you don't want to take the, the short acting ones. So the long acting one might work, but then it affects you at night. Anyway, T4 can be converted by our body to T3. It's what's used as the main signal to the TSH to stop raising. And so if your doctor sees that your TSH is like six or so, they might dose you with 100 micrograms of T4, see if it reduces. They usually want it below four. Now, for enhanced people, you can't really use TSH as the signal that your thyroid is growing. Why? If you're using growth hormone, growth hormone directly grows the thyroid without TSH. So in fact, it may lower your TSH. You may think, oh, I'm good. I don't need to worry about it. But growth hormone is growing the thyroid in adulthood, which will lead eventually to the nodules and those growths. That's one thing. The second thing, which we didn't know before and we discovered like last year, is that HCG, which many people use to keep their testicles intact on their cycle, has one disadvantage over HMG's luteinizing hormone component, which is HCG not only binds to the luteinizing hormone receptor in the testicles, but also binds to the TSH receptor. So HCG will act like TSH 
and not be registered, registered in your blood test, not only that, it should actually lower your TSH slightly, so you'll not realize what's going on, and you'll actually have TSH growing much faster. So if you're taking HCG and growth hormone, you may want to dose T4. I would dose T4 to get my TSH to be low, like 1.5. So it's a minimal signal just to maintain the thyroid. So if we're using HCG or growth hormone, we should also consider taking T4. Really, yeah. To prevent thyroid cancer. Exactly. To prevent the excess growth of the thyroid that can be unregistered in the blood test. You won't see it, your doctor won't see it. In fact, it should lower your TSH. So I, I have a friend that's been on HCG for 25 years. Uh, he takes it twice a week because he's, his body doesn't produce luteinizing hormone. Yeah. So the doctor prescribed it for yeah. him, and that actually gets his natural testosterone to a very high level it's a long just through HCG. He doesn't have any thyroid problems, but he's taking a low dosage over a long period of time, and you know that might not be typical. So, but I think it's just good to keep it in context. Like not everybody who takes HCG or HGH is going to get thyroid no, cancer. No, no, no. Of course but not. it's it's a it's another risk factor, and the more risk factors you add on top, plus in combination with your genetics and your susceptibility to cancer yeah. and your diet and everything else, like it's another risk factor. I just don't want people to be afraid of growth hormone or afraid of HCG because well, it's not like everybody that uses them is going to get no, cancer. I know. I mean, your thyroid, depending on your genetics, will grow at a different rate. And then some people will have more damaged cells in their thyroid. If you don't have these uh, genetically damaged cells, you won't get a cancer when it grows. And people have different major overarching cancer gene, genetic polymorphisms, like in the BRCA genes, which we haven't really looked at for you, by the way. It, it really depends. All I want to mention is this. If you're doing things that are manipulating your biology, you want to be try, try to be aware as much as you can of what other things are happening in your body. Like, for example, if you're using testosterone and your testicles have shrunk, your cells in your testicles are getting damaged. In post-mortem studies of bodybuilders, they find scar tissue in their testicles. So there is damage over time. Your HCG may be able to get your wife pregnant again in the future, but you don't have all the cells you used to have. You'll never will. So these are things to keep in mind. That's why you might want to use HMG or HCG throughout your cycle. And I let my testicles atrophy to the max to where they went up inside my body. There was no testicles outside my body anymore because I, I wanted to see, like I knew I could take HCG at any moment and bring them back, but I'm like, let's see how far we could push this. Let's oh, make my bells completely disappear for a short period of time. Yeah. But I'm glad I did it. I had to, I wanted to experience Can I ask you something? Yeah. When this happened, did your sensation change when you're having sex? Yeah. It, it was, was not very different. different. Right? I okay, so somebody finally admits this. But 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 there was I have to really think back to it, but like it was harder to come. Yes. For sure. And really the orgasm hard. was less powerful. Yeah, but I could stay hard and I could bang long and like I think sexual performance was was like good, but like the orgasm was a lot harder. Exactly, the orgasm. I'm not sure the reason why. I don't know if the testicles performing a physical function on the pleasure, but we do know that local androgen activity is critical for the full use of the penis. Oh. So when the when the testicles are producing androgens locally, I think the fact you're on trend makes up for it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't know you were doing that. Yeah, well, that, well that's what makes them disappear. Yeah, trend. Yeah, trend, trend is one of the most suppressive. Yeah, the total, Deca. total shutdown. Yeah, no testosterone production. All shrivel up. Yeah, it's it's ridiculous that more people don't talk about this online. I mean, oh, you know, I did, I did like the feeling though of like before they disappeared completely. I could like pull my lower stomach in and pop my balls in my body <laughs> and then let my lower stomach out and let them pop out. And like the popping in and out of the balls going into my torso, like that it was kind of pleasurable. It's kind of like a girl just gently squeezing my oh, balls. Don't I usually I don't like usually I don't like that because I feel vulnerable like if they squeeze too hard. Yeah, but like, imagine imagine you know you're in control of it so you can just squeeze them a little let it go yeah, without even touching them. The loss just of sensation is, suck is in, too extreme. But, uh, yeah. but the loss of sensation is not worth it. Yeah. yeah, I really don't. Oh, I wouldn't do it on purpose, but as an experiment to get to know your body. But you have to, if, I mean, if you're taking... But I got scar tissue from it, is what you're saying. That's no, it. maybe you didn't, but but over time, it seems in the postmortem studies, they do have that. So you just want to be aware of what could be going wrong in your body. Like in your brain, over time, your brain will become less serotonergic when you're on androgens, unless you have high estrogen levels. So you might want to affect your serotonin somehow, which you should make a video about next. Let's do this next. Serotonin. Be swole and swole, friends of freedom, pioneers of human evolution, a day natty. He's a day wasted. Huh.